Hi, this is Tim Campsell at Action Coach of Indiana with our Business Spotlight series. The purpose is to interview local business owners and promote them through our social channels and email database. And this is a free service we're providing because we know that when all small businesses are strong, the economy is strong. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Beth. Welcome, Beth. It's great to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So let's start before we get on into the business side. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you personally? So I am, I'm Beth Stetter. I own Bedazzle Boutique in Pendleton, Indiana. Uh, I've been here for a long, long time, 12, 13, 14 years. I've lost track. <laughs> um, I have a wonderful family that, and we have a home nearby. So I have a short commute to my job. Uh, I am a clothing and ladies boutique. Awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about you, more about your boutique. I, I love this question. If I was to say you have 60 seconds to tell us your commercial, what would your commercial be about your business? So my goal is to make all women feel beautiful. It is uh, a women's boutique. So we have everything uh, having to do with women. We have just about everything they could ever want here. Uh, my mission is to uplift the people that come in my business, uh, our motto is really um, that everybody is beautiful and we just want everybody to leave here better off than when they came in. So it's not always about selling, it is making relationships and those relationships are what gets you through all kinds of um, things in life and things that have to do with your business. And I think that's one reason that we've been here so long because we've made so many friendships. So it's about friendship, love, and selling beautiful, amazing clothes, jewelry, and accessories. I love it. Fantastic. So <laughs> tell us again, how long have you been in business? I have lost track, but I believe it's 14 years here in Pendleton. Before I had my boutique in Pendleton, I did live in Germany with my husband and I had a boutique there for uh, several years. So I've been in this business a long, long time. Fantastic. Wonderful. So um, Beth, tell us more specifically, who do you serve? Who are your best customers? What we call a target audience. I actually have a wide range of age groups that shop from me because we carry very trendy clothes. We carry fun clothes. So there's younger people that want it. There's people my age that want it. And then there's also older ladies that come in and we carry all sizes and it's just more fun wear than it is uh, business attire. So it is for comfort, for weekend wear. So we do actually have a wonderful age group of women. I'd say the, the most the biggest age group is probably 30 to 50. But again, we have teenagers, we have uh, people of all ages that come in. In fact, uh, quite a few of our new customers lately at the boutique are uh, in their 80s and 90s and they wanna have some fun clothes. Oh, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit more about, you've mentioned a couple of times that it's more fun stuff. So give us some examples. Yes. What, what does that mean? Uh, well, we like to carry some Indiana things, uh, t-shirts, flannels, more comfort wear, joggers. We carry things made in Italy. We do try to buy uh, made in the U.S. products when at all possible. We carry um, comfortable jeans, comfortable tops. The fun wear comes in. We have things with straps, with choker necks, with cold shoulders. So everything's the very latest trends. And it's more about the things that you might wear out to dinner with your girlfriends, your husbands, things you might wear on your weekend. Or if, you know, things have changed. A lot of people work from home. They want loungewear. So we do carry a lot of joggers and loungewear and things that people would feel comfortable uh, just sitting around in their homes in as well. Fantastic. Awesome. So um, COVID has uh, had an impact on many of us over the last uh, year and a half. Yes. What's the greatest impact that COVID had on your business? I feel very blessed and fortunate that before COVID 
really closed down my business, my storefront business, I was doing live shows on Facebook. So I was already, I already had an audience uh, in groups on my Facebook and my Facebook page that were watching me live and buying from me that way. So then my storefront closed uh, temporarily. So my storefront was my main income. It was, it made a lot of money. Uh, we had one in Noblesville. We had one in Pendleton. I decided uh, because of um, logistics that I was going to close the Noblesville store and go all into one and then go live. So I decided uh, then to do live shows, online selling and keep one boutique open. Then my boutique got closed and then we had to work short staff. So I had to go live uh, sometimes six days a week, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day. My storefront sales tanked. Uh, and, and actually I've gotten some increase, but my storefront sales compared to what they were pre COVID, it's not even comparable and it's, uh, it is upsetting, but you just adapt, you just adapt. So we actually go live and if a big bill is coming up or I see something ahead, we go live more, we do more marketing online. So it's actually, it's really cool because it makes you learn a whole different avenue of your business and you have to be creative and you have to be willing to change. So that's what we did, we changed. So I actually made my storefront a smaller, more concentrated space uh, that I love. It's, it's, a, it's a little dream boat place. And then I have a huge, huge storage area now and I go live. So this is my set behind me and I sell off Facebook. I have my own app. I have a website and now we're working on our second website where we'll be going live on our website as well. So it's just constantly changing, constantly moving forward, but definitely I had an impact on my sales. My income went down and now I'm coming back out of that. Uh, it's a learning process, but I just feel thankful that I had some um, knowledge and that I am not a shy person and I can get up in front of a camera. And even if I make a mistake or be silly, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. So um, pivoting has been a huge theme over the, the last 18 months. It sounds like you were actually ahead of the curve in terms of already doing the live prior to having to. So congratulations on, on being able to pivot. And you just explained a number of different um, avenues on, on how you pivoted. What would you say was the most instrumental um, in terms of I made this change and that was what helped me to survive through the crisis. If I hadn't gone to live shows and done it in a way that was through a company so I could be organized, I would not have been able to save my business. I, there's no way you can go, uh, from a business that was making hundreds of thousands of dollars to practically nothing because your storefront's been closed down or people are not feeling it like shopping and going in places, uh, you can't survive that for very long. So my making my live shows the priority, also teaming up with people uh, a company where I can sell that's all computerized to keep everything completely organized, selling through Shopify, uh, where all the payments are secure, where I don't have to invoice people. Uh, it, it just, it changed the dynamics of my business. It changed how I operate. 
and it, it saved my business. It saved my business and I love my job. I love my job in the boutique with the women, but I love these ladies online as well. I feel like I know them. Some of them have been with me all several years now and they're like my friends. So that going for it and going um, through the right channels was everything that saved my business. That is so awesome. I would imagine too, it's also opened the door for uh, customers that aren't local that wouldn't have maybe not even known about you. Is that, is that the case? It is amazing. I sell all over the country. I sell to Guam. I sell uh, in Hawaii. I have some people in Alaska. Every day I have people sign up. I went from having my local people uh, and several people out of state when I was invoicing before I started through uh, the company. Um, and now it's just everywhere. I have people in every single state and half of my online sales now are to out of state customers. And again, I have people sign up every day. So it, it really is incredible. Plus having my own app, uh, that is also really amazing because people can get app notifications when new arrivals go on. Uh, we sign up. I just started an incentive program in the boutique for my employees. So they uh, get an incentive if they have a customer that signs up for the app because everything that comes in new goes straight on that app and people can just go on there and buy it instantly. It, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Awesome. Congratulations. So thank you. That, here's an interesting question. It's been said that smart people learn from their mistakes and wise people learn from the mistakes of others. So What's a mistake you made along the way that you'd be willing to share so that other entrepreneurs can learn from your experience? Well, I, I do make mistakes, but I would say uh, the worst thing to do, and I have done this, I was on cash basis. I only bought what I could, and then I sold it. Then I used that money to buy more, and I didn't use any credit. Then when COVID started, I did uh, take on some credit cards and I feel like the best way is to always, if at all possible, keep things, pay ahead, don't get on terms, don't take out credit cards. I know you have to use them, but pay them off every month. Uh, so you don't have that hanging over your head. It's always best if you own the merchandise that you sell. So I try to buy enough, sell, buy more, instead of going into large sums of debt with high interest. So I would say that is one very important thing. Uh, the other is make sure that you're in the right location. The mm -hmm. right location is everything. Um, I would say my biggest mistake that I made was spreading myself too thin. I opened a store in Fishers, then I didn't like uh, how the traffic was. So I moved that store to Noblesville and nobody cares about the business as much as the owner. And when you, you can't spread yourself into two huge boutiques, do live shows. I am a very, very uh, active person, a workaholic. I put in 70 or 80 hours a week. But what I found is centralizing, keeping it under control, being able to be here with my employees, my customers. I want my customers treated right. I want my store clean. I want things done like I want them. I could not do that when I was trying to open in this city and this city. And I love having it back in one location. So I would say my biggest mistake was trying to branch out when I really didn't need to. Mm -hmm. well, awesome. Thank you for sharing. So Beth, what do you feel is the biggest challenge you're going to face over the next 12 months? I still feel like people are having some hesitancy uh, with their spending, sometimes going into businesses because they're unsure uh, of what the future holds. So it is just going to be constantly changing and adapting. 
Uh, I've lowered my prices so I could compete because there's a lot of competition out there uh, on the online game, the online business. So keeping up with current trends, prices, that is all and always finding new customers and getting that reach, that reach when you're online, your marketing is everything. So uh, I'm going to really, really be, I am a proactive marketer, but I'm really going after the marketing. I really feel uh, my, my biggest asset, my biggest business is going to be my live shows and my online business. I love my storefront and I love the people that come in, but my money is on my online Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So second last question here, Beth, um, we'll get your contact information so that we can include that along with this video. So folks can visit your website, uh, Great. reach out to you. So I'll, I'll get you to send that to me afterwards. But is there anything else that you want to make sure that we cover today? Or any types? Do you have any types of offers running? Uh, well, we always have an offer on our app. If you download our app, uh, it's Bedazzle Boutique. It's a free app in your app store. Uh, so we always have that going. I just want to encourage other people that are in business not to give up, never give up. Uh, you're your best marketer. Just take good care of your customers. They'll keep returning to you, but never, never give up your marketing or your hope because you can get through it and it's going to be okay. Oh, thank you so much. I love that inspiration. So we'll include the, uh, the link to the app as well um, in this video so folks can Great. download that. Beth, last question here. What's been most inspiring to you during all the craziness of the past 18 months? Well, God is my main inspiration. He helps me through everything. I lost a son to cancer uh, in his 20s, and he walks beside me in everything that I do. He, I have joy in this life uh, and I enjoy all my customers, the ladies that have supported small business through these hard times have inspired me. And I, I just love my job. I love the life God gave me. And I, I really do want to inspire others to go for their dreams. Well, thank you so much for for that uh, heartfelt uh, sharing. And I, I just, I love that people, like you mentioned, that people are looking after small businesses. They yes. understand that, you know, we're all going through hardships and, and the folks who are, are buying local and buying small are incredible. Um, like they are. Earlier, you can get cheaper options at the big box stores, but that's not helping as much as it does when people shop local and help small businesses. That's right. We should all help each other. Awesome, Beth. Well, thank you so much. Um, that does conclude the interview. For those listening, if you've heard something that intrigues you, please reach out. Um, visit uh, Bedazzle's website. We'll, again, include that along with uh, this video. Um, check out Beth. Go visit her shop if you're local. And yes. uh, make sure to, to support her and encourage her for all that she's uh, doing to, to help women be inspired and, and, uh, and encouraged. So um, Beth, again, thank you so much thank for you. your interview today. I appreciate uh, you having you having you on the show. And thank uh, you. Um, as a uh, thank you to everyone that appears on the show, we do offer a complimentary coaching session. So we'll talk about that here offline. Okay. Perfect. Again, it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure having you today and I wish you tremendous success. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. All right. Have a fantastic day. You too.